Titusfield Sports Channel News. Basque has criticised a Welsh minister for attacking shooting in the Senate. The Minister for Climate Change, Julie James MS, made the comments during a debate about shooting in Wales, saying, I do not think killing anything as a sport or leisure is anything that any civilised society should support. She added, we absolutely need to protect our ways of life and we need to protect our communities, but we also need to change our behaviour. Basque says her comments will create widespread discontent across Wales's rural communities. The Senate was debating proposals to introduce a licensing system for the release of pheasants and red leg partridges in Wales. We think what the Welsh Climate Change Minister has said is absolutely appalling. This isn't about restricting the releasing of pheasants or red leg partridges in Wales. This is about shutting down all live quarry shooting in Wales and indeed fishing when you think of what she said. So please, please act now. Visit the BASC website and fill in a short public opinion survey to say no to the Welsh Government's proposals to restrict game bird releasing in Wales. Thank you for your support. Protect shooting. We'll be taking an in-depth look at this issue in next week's programme. Follow the link below to have your say on the consultation on game bird releasing. Field Sports Channel is helping a group of hunters threatening to sue anti-hunting MPs for nearly £100,000 for using their photographs without permission. Field Sports Channel's Charlie Jacoby is representing the group demanding payment for photos used by the all-party parliamentary group report on banning trophy hunting. He's quoted in the Daily Mail saying, if we can't get them on hate speech, we'll get them on copyright. The hunters say the photographs, which showed them posing with dead animals, were used without their consent. The group has sent invoices to Sir Roger Gale, Conservative MP for North Thanet and former chairman of the now defunct all-party group, demanding £1,200 per photograph. With 78 photographs used in the report, the total bill could reach £93,600. Charlie says if he doesn't pay up, the group will begin legal action. MPs voted in favour of the Hunting Trophies Bill, introduced by Crawley MP Henry Smith, and it's now being considered by the House of Lords. Three people from the online Country Squire magazine are in court this week defending libel allegations brought by Chris Packham. The BBC TV presenter is taking legal action against the editor of Country Squire magazine, Dominic Whiteman, and contributors Nigel Bean and Paul Reid. Packham complains that articles in Country Squire allege he misled the public into donating to a wildlife charity to rescue tigers from circuses. The articles claim the tigers were kept in good conditions and didn't need rescuing. The trial in the High Court in London started on the 2nd of May. Packham is also taking legal action against Field Sports Channel over separate claims. Farmers are angry that the Scottish Government is exploring the idea of reintroducing links. The outcry came after a reception at Holyrood where politicians, rewilding groups, scientists and landowners met to discuss reintroducing the apex predator. Farmers are calling on the Scottish Government to make a clear statement rejecting proposals to reintroduce the cats, which are known to kill over 6,000 sheep every year in Norway. Some conservationists believe bringing back lynx would benefit ecotourism and help control deer where they damage woodland. But the National Farmers Union Scotland says the idea of bringing back the lynx, bears or wolves is wholly unacceptable to those managing livestock. NFU President Martin Kennedy says those reaping any benefit from these species reintroductions are rarely the ones bearing any of the costs or negative impacts. The Countryside Alliance is urging the field sports community to be aware of antis in the local elections. It says people need to scrutinise potential councillors about their priorities for the countryside ahead of the vote on May the 4th. It comes after a string of local councils imposed bans on meat and dairy. More than 8,000 seats are being contested at 230 councils across England. We need to make sure when we're deciding who to entrust with our vote that the candidates we go for are not going to be held in thrall to the tiny but shouty minority of activists who are the ones who are pushing these schemes. A group set up by the Irish government is recommending sweeping changes to the Republic's firearms licensing system. 
Some of the proposals sound like common sense, but the Countryside Alliance in Ireland says shooters have not been properly consulted. The Firearms Expert Committee wants to bring part of the licensing system online and change the current practice of issuing individual certificates for each firearm. We wouldn't see policies being introduced or changes made to the farming sector or others without them being present um, and having the ability to feed through uh, their ideas and suggestions, especially on something that is looking at licensing at all levels and how to uh, better improve uh, for, for everyone. Basque and other field sports groups are launching a quality assurance scheme for venison. The meat's packaging will carry a sticker which guarantees that the meat has been produced using the highest standards. The scheme aims to improve traceability of wild venison, increase bioconfidence and support woodland management initiatives in England, Northern Ireland and Wales. They'll know it's wild, which has so many benefits, and they'll be able to know that it's gone through all that best practice and it's a really good quality meat that they're actually purchasing. A technology tycoon has relocated a herd of Scottish red deer to his company's headquarters in Norfolk. William Sachetti, who is developing self-driving cars and robots for the NHS, has released the deer into the grounds of the former RAF site at Nettishead. The move is part of his plans to combine technology development and conservation. Sachetti bought the deer when he discovered the herd was due to be culled. He says that working in a rural environment surrounded by wildlife will inspire his team. A new government report reveals people in the countryside spend 20% more on essentials. The all-party parliamentary group on rural business found that people in rural areas typically need to spend between 10 and 20 percent more on everyday requirements than those living in cities and built-up towns, despite wages being 7.5 percent lower. And finally, the black fox we reported on Field Sports News has been tracked down and caught. People in the Welsh town of Barry were warned to stay away from the rare black fox, which had been on the run for two weeks. The animal is part of a line of silver foxes brought to the UK from North America for the fur trade in the early 1900s. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.